Hello, everyone. How is everyone this evening? Uh, should I leave these glasses on or are they too reflective? Maybe I'll change these ones. They're a little blue. How's that? A little bit better. <laughs> How is everyone this evening? I am, I guess I've been home just a little over a week from QuiltCon and just getting my boot, <laughs> getting my stuff all back together and back to the regular rhythms. Uh, if you were at QuiltCon and you're in the, the chat, let everyone know. I know we're going to talk a little bit about QuiltCon tonight and uh, lots of lots of questions already asked. So I am just going to get going with some of them, though I am seeing so many people here that I know. <laughs> Holy mackerel, from all over the world. We've got... Uh, it could be anyone from Hamilton, New Zealand. I know where Hamilton is. Uh, I laugh because I've been to Hamilton, New Zealand. I've been to Hamilton, Missouri, and I have Hamilton, Ontario around the corner here. And Sonia from Western Australia. Are you from Perth or are you from one of the other little towns? Perth is a big city. <laughs> oh boy, lots of people here from New Zealand. Oh boy, everyone. Good morning to all of you. It's your dream. Sunbeam Fabric Art says, it's my dream to go to QuiltCon. Well, the dates are already out for next year. It is in Phoenix, and it is February 20th to 23. Um, the, the, pow, um, the executive tries to move it from one coast to the other every year. COVID kind of mixed up the, the cadence, but I think after this year, they're going to be back, going back to that one on the West Coast and one on the East Coast. So everybody has the best chance of getting to it. So I'm just organizing a couple of my screens here. Oh boy, look at all of these. <laughs> Sorry, I just, uh, just flabbergasted with how many people have already shown up. Thank you so much. So, um... Let's start off with, <sighs> I think I get asked some version of this question every, every month and I'll just go over it again. So it's from the UK and the person's asking, how do you stay inspired to keep cre creating? How do you battle the down days? Well, I've said this before and you've got to think about your creativity as a muscle in your head. Uh, you can only be creative if you've let those muscles train and recover. So if you are busy burning out that muscle, doing something else, whether it be your job, whether it's being looking after someone else or just looking after your family, or there's just a lot of things going on in your life, it's going to be hard to use that muscle for creativity. Um, but you may also find that it's you need to choose a different time of day, you know, asking yourself to come home and be creative after you've been giving and giving and giving all day. You may not have anything left over at the end of the day. Maybe for you, it's better that you get up 30 minutes early and put in 30 minutes of sewing before you start work. And when I get down, that's one of the first things that I try to do because it's such a positive re like the more creative things I can do, the healthier that I feel and the easier everything else becomes. So I, it's kind of like a rolling stone. So I try to get up that 30 minutes early. I use my timer um, because sometimes you're worried when you get into that right side of your brain that you're going to be late for everything else. Just give yourself 30 minutes and stop five minutes early and set yourself up for the next day so it's so much easier to get going on it. But that's my version of the answer for this time. Uh, Lost Feline Plush is saying, is there a good forum for young quilters to learn from more experienced ones? Sometimes it would be really nice to ask someone with experience. Well, I would recommend joining Karen's crew. That's my subscription thing through YouTube. It's not very expensive. I think it's $4.99 a month. Um, and we have a number of young people within the group and there's a lot of experienced people in our group. There's some very experienced people in our group and, um, there's a lot of, 
solidarity and support, both mental and quilt-wise, and it's a lovely group of people. Now, I'm not on Reddit, but I do know some young people that are on the forums in Reddit, and they get some support there, but you might not necessarily get them from older quilters, more mature quilters, but there are young, experienced quilters too. So those are my two recommendations. Whew. We've got a couple of first time people here. Chris Murphy from South Australia. Oh boy, Charlotte, North Carolina. You're coming with me to Harlem in Belgium in September. It is gonna be so much fun. I've been dealing with Anne this week. Um, we're just getting together. We're trying to lock down uh, the itinerary by the end of March so uh, we can give you a good firm answer on what we're going to be doing each day. We've actually, I've actually got that question from someone saying, we're in Zuffen for five days. What do we do? Well, Zuffen is just the, the, um, the hub that we're going to be using. Zuffen is a beautiful beautiful uh, market town in the province of Gelderland and from there we can jump off to a couple of quilt stores we can um, there's textile museums there's research uh, textile research centers and everything so uh, it's just our jump off point but luckily there is a quilt store there as well so plenty of great places to eat um, plenty of wonderful things to do there too and on your free afternoon or whatever, you can walk the streets, um, rent a bike, go out into the country. That's what my mother and I did a couple of years ago. And uh, there's bike trails or many people took a boat cruise on the river. So lots of things to do. Um, Daryl M has asked, do you starch before you cut or as you build your blocks? You starch before you cut. So it comes back to what starch actually is. Starch is scaffolding for the weave of your fabric. So you want to shrink them, you want to starch them. Sometimes the starch shrinks them and you wanna do that all before you cut your fabric. And that will keep, what you're trying to do is stop the weave from fraying and distorting itself. So the starch goes on top of it and you make your cuts and you shouldn't have to add any more starch as you go along. And you don't need to use starch for everything. Um, I know some people starch everything, but where you want to use the starch is when the weave of the, the, the piece that you cut gets on a bias, because that means that there's so much untethered uh, threads. When you cut it square, you're cutting with the grain of the, um, of the block and you don't have the same issues there. So if you're a beginner quilter and you're just doing squares and triangles, uh, sorry, squares and rectangles, starching is kind of, like, I don't, <laughs> I'll say it right out loud. I don't starch when I'm doing simple blocks like that, but I will definitely starch when I'm doing uh, triangles, not necessarily HSTs because I make those uh, two at a time, but when I'm cutting one at a time, or I'm doing an equilateral triangle, or an isosceles triangle, or doing a diamond shape. I am definitely starching those fabrics. Finishing a quilt. How do you decide whether you want to quilt it versus tied? Um, well, there's a couple of different advantages and disadvantages. So if you are quilting a, uh, a quilt, you've got to be able to quilt it. So you've got a domestic machine. How much effort do you want to put into keeping your sandwich flat and um, pushing it through? Uh, are you looking for that extra design element that the quilting will give to your quilt? Um, tying is simple but tying rarely gets as close together as quilting on a machine does. So it's how much you wanna tack down uh, your batting on the inside too. So when you buy batting, check the instructions because it'll say how far apart 
uh, your lines or your ties can be without being tethered and without them, um, when you wash it, the batting will break down if they're too far apart. So I would say tying is easy, but it's also the weight of the fabric too. Like if, if you're making a denim quilt, tying is so much easier for you. And if, you know, pushing all those layers through a quilt with the added weight, you're going to have to have a denim needle. You're going to have to go slow. Um, things will need to be far apart. So in those cases, you see a lot of tied um, denim quilts because it's just easier. So it's up to you. It's, 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 uh, and it comes down to an aesthetic. Do you like the look of a quilted top over a tied quilt? Um, with tied quilts, you rarely get uh, creases or uh, get things trapped. So it's definitely an easier way to do things. Uh, somebody has asked me, have I got my adding machine strips into a quilt yet? I am making my last strips tonight and then I can make my last blocks and then I can get it into a quilt. Um, I'm putting it on point. So I've had to make the, the set in triangles for the outside edges. That's what I'm doing right now. Ooh, <laughs> I have somebody who's asking me, how did I get into quilting? Um, I'm sure most people know this story, but I was just working a job when I was just terribly burnt out and I just needed something to look forward to when I got home. Um, I, my kids were all teenagers and everybody was playing this game of... <laughs> staying in their rooms and it was just a really hard time. I was working really long hours and I was quite burnt out and that's how I started quilting. I needed to fill my bucket and I have a video about that called What's in the Blue Bag if you want to see the full story and what quilt it was. <laughs> We've got TJ here from Hamilton, Ontario. We got all the Hamiltons covered. What is my favorite free motion quilting design? I have been practicing graffiti quilter, uh, graffiti quilting from a book uh, with Carly Porter. I actually got to meet her last week at QuiltCon. And um, I'm having fun doing compound uh, designs. So it's a loop and doing something around it, either a feather or just a bump. And I usually like to do two shapes. So one can fill the big spaces and then a smaller one can fill the small spaces. But I have been practicing with all these uh, scrap quilts that I made last year um, on different designs. Like last week I did one just with feathers in it. And the week before I did one with um, ribbons and just combination of designs. I don't like really tight designs. I don't like a lot of pebbling. I want my quilts still to have a lot of fluff in them. Uh, if I'm making a baby quilt, often I'll just do a big loop-de-loop. -loop. And the trick with any of these designs is to vary this, um, I shouldn't say the trick, but with a loop-de-loop, -loop, the trick is to vary your, your shapes. So you can fill in different corners and different, um, different spots without thinking. So sometimes I do two in one loops. Sometimes I do a tiny loops. Sometimes um, I'll do a round uh, back over top of another. So, yeah. Um, Kathy Rask has asked, is my quilt pattern going to be available for those who don't cruise with me? Um, the Capella cluster quilt is available only to the people that are on the Iceland uh, cruise this year. It will probably be available to the public in 2025. Um, Judy Quilt Quilts Now has asked, is uh, she's really interested in Quilt As You Go and am I going to be making another Quilt As You Go in the series? Yes, I am. Um, so I think they'll probably come out around June. 
I've got I've been looking at the roster of what quilts I am making uh, right now and I've got a fairly thick uh, list of things that need to be done before July so I think that July is going to be the June or July is the first time I'm going to be able to get a chance to make something new <laughs> Nancy Nancy Cox oh she's asked this question she's in our uh, Karen's quilt crew a longtime member of Karen's quilt crew and she wants recommendation for somebody attending quilt con for the first time I'm planning for next year so if you've ever been to a comic con or one of these other conventions of fandom uh, you probably know what the feeling is in the air but quilt con has a slightly different feeling than a lot of other quilt shows because there's just so much friendship involved uh, there's so many people like you Nancy and I we've never met in person but we know each other to a fair extent just because we meet each uh, each other every month in the stitch and chat group and then in Phoenix we will be able to meet for the first time in person and that's pretty darn special um, and you'll repeat that with so many different people so it's a lot of extrovertness that you're that you're going to have and a lot of excitement so the real thing for a first person is you just need to pace yourself uh, I was advised not to take more than two classes uh, your first year by a friend who had signed up for everything the first year and you really understand why because there's just so much to do like I had lectures um, walk the quilt show and see the vendors and that took me four days I met up with my quilt crew I met up with people who were on the cruise um, I had a, a I met up with Youngman Lee over coffee and those things were on top of the other things and it's just amazing how things fill up really quickly so try not to overbook yourself so when some it, it, I know it sounds like you won't have anything to do for four days but you will um, <laughs> there's just you can only really see about an hour of the quilt show at one time because your brain just goes on overload even today I saw a quilt posted I'm going where was that quilt you know I walked that show four times trying to absorb all the all the quilts and uh, there's still one that got away so allow yourself the time to enjoy quilts and all things quilty um, if you can do the curated um, the curated tour uh, Mary Fawns did it this year in uh, uh, last year Teresa did it the year before I think Mary Fawns did it but the my first year Jack and Gehring did it so it's seeing a portion of the quilts through a really nice lens and uh, you also get in early to see the quilts before anybody else does uh, the quilt sh the quilt tour normally happens at nine o'clock and the quilt sh show doesn't open till 10 um also take a look in your stash this is something probably for much closer to when you get there to see if there's anything that you need because there's going to be vendors there and uh, it'll be good to pick them up in person if you can so you can test drive if you need a good pair of scissors you can try out different ones if you need some rulers you can test them out at the vendors and things like that so yeah that's the the first thing um you'll have to just think of transport like the first thing right now that you should do is be planning a budget because you're going to have to get there you're going to have to stay there and then the expense of actual quilt con and the meals while you're there so get your budget in place so you uh, can start saving uh, somebody has asked will you show us what you got at quilt con that is my video this week so my 2024 quilt con haul um, Becky Bradley has asked have I ever sewn with cork um, I've never incorporated into a, a 3d object but I've certainly sewn with it um, just as a, as a decoration like I put that on my laptop case so uh, the quilt the cork that they've um, they sell for for quilting is, or like for bag making and uh, wallet making and things like that is very forgiving 
the really nice thing is that you don't need to bind the edges if you don't want to. You can leave them, I wouldn't say them raw because they're not going to fray on you, but you just don't have to, to turn them over the same way you would a fabric. <laughs> John, John Barnby, uh, who is, uh, came to Hawaii with, uh, with the tour and, uh, I met up with him at QuiltCon, has just said, be sure to bring comfy shoes. That is definitely a must. You must be able, just walking on that concrete for four days just is so hard on your, on your legs, whether you're moving or you're sitting down or standing, like all the benders are sore. Um, I, Arizona is going to be hot. I would recommend compression socks because that really can make a big difference, but um, it might be really hot in Phoenix and you might not be up to wearing compression socks. <sighs> Marianne McLeod has asked, how do we find out about your cruises? Well, I have an events page on my website and just go there. Um, Gina, I wouldn't mind if you, Gina Stewart is with us. Gina is my new assistant and she's in the chat answering questions. Um, I'll, I'm going to ask her to drop the link to the two Facebook sites. I put them in the the, the mel melon out there if you can. And there's two Facebook groups, one for Holland, one for Iceland. And you can find direct information on my website under events. The Facebook pages are mainly for people who are traveling single and would like to find a buddy. Um, uh, travel uh, to share the the room or the cabin with and uh, just to get to know everybody. Yeah. Oh, lots of Aussies today. <sighs> what kind of batting is best for baby quilts? Well, it depends on what kind of baby quilt you're making. If you're making a baby quilt where you want tummy time on it and it's going to be one that goes in the car and the car seat and travels everywhere with you, I would go with a poly because it's just going to stand up the best. Um, if not, then I would go with a cotton, but a wool, if it was just a bed quilt, I would uh, go with wool, but it still, even then, bedding gets washed an awful lot of times and wool just needs special care. So I would go with a cotton or a polyester. Okay, so Sean Rick has said, I have two quilt tops that were made by my grandmother and great grandmother. Not sure if I should quilt them. I have quilted all of my own quilt tops. I'm afraid of ruining them. Well, um, I have made some old quilt tops and I've asked people that have worked with heritage quilts and things like that, what should you, what should you do? Um, one of the best ways of preserving them is putting them into a quilt because they're more fragile as a quilt top. And they told me not to wash it, get it down and quilt it before you try any, uh, any washing or uh, spot cleaning because the, the backing and the batting is just gonna su supply some extra support. Um, I'm not the last word on this. So if anybody else has any experience working with old quilt tops, uh, just drop it in the chat there because this is just advice that was given to me. So that's what I did. I um, quilted it first, then I trimmed off the, the bad parts after it had been quilted and then I bound it and then I gave it to, um, we gave it a wash just on a gentle cycle and we uh, let it uh, air dry. I didn't put it in the dryer. But also these quilt tops were not fine quilting. Like these look like, not practice pieces, but they look like they were, they were efforts in the beginning part of somebody's journey. Uh, they were made by just scraps and a mishmash of fabrics and things like that. So if you think your quilt tops by your grandmother and your great grandmother are more dear than that, um, I would maybe check with somebody local. What's the best way or trick to really get excellent, even, perfect seams? Is this, this is by Polio. Um, 
if you're talking about quarter inch seams, I have done a couple of videos on that. Um, I have a video on how to sew straight and I have a video on how to get the perfect quarter inch seam. So just take a look at those on my channel and that both of them are full of tips of how to do it. And just realize that it takes time and practice. It's not, you're not just going to learn one trick and that's going to be solve the problem. That one trick is going to help you get there, but it takes practice. And that's why I'm always talking about making practice blocks so that you can get into the, the swing of it. Um, practice on things that are not precious. The other thing is you need a warm up exercise, right? Um, when you first sit down at your machine, your first seam is not necessarily your best result. You know, you got to remember, oh, I've got to change the stitch size or I need to change the height of my chair or I need better lighting and things like that. So it's really important to make a couple of practice blocks every time you sit down just to get your, your head in the game. <laughs> uh, what would you recommend way to hang a vintage quilt queen size without a sleeve? Sorry, I'm just reading this directly from the chat. Um, I know um, Sew Tights has a new system with magnets, but you can actually see the magnet on the front of it. So you may not want to do that. Um, There is, like you do need a, most of the solutions all have a sleeve on them because if you're wanting to see the front of the quilt in, it, in, in its entirety, you cannot, um, like this one right here is hanging from a shower curtain, but you can see that up at the top and I don't think I would necessarily want to do that on vintage fabrics. Um, I have many quilts that I'm, I'm smaller quilts that I have hanging on the wall that I've just pinned command strips. Um, I put a piece of Velcro that I pinned to the quilt side and then I have a command strip on the wall. But I'm thinking with vintage, the sleeve is actually the best way because that way you're not damaging the quilt top. Um, you don't necessarily have to do a bar. There are, um, you can take two pieces of wood that lock together. I mean, you could fold it and put over a ladder or um, a hanging bar or something like that. So, <laughs> Craft Charm is asked, how do you know what your quilts are going to look like before making them? Do you use software? I'm having trouble in the, this area. The mere ratio of colors end up making my quilts different than I expect. Sometimes it's also the magic. Um, you envision what a quilt can look like and often it's better once the once it all comes together and you get the binding on. But there is a program called Pre-Quilt that if you can design the block and put it into the pattern or there are many designers that use Pre-Quilt and you can use their coloring pages, like all my stash busters are on pre-quilt, so you can go in there and color them the way that you'd like. Um, sometimes you can use pen and paper, but it's very, very hard to understand, especially when you're first starting out, how patterns are going to interact with each other. The um, Like you cut out a blue and white fabric and you think, oh, this is blue. But as you cut it out, you realize how light it could be, like if it's mostly white or that effect of white on the, the blue fabric. Um, and just how a stripe can draw your, your eyes in a different direction. So part of it is just playing with them. So what I like to do is if I've got a quilt block, I will take my fabric and I will fold it in the shape, like I'll fold the fat quarter down into a an HST or a flying geese and just kind of get a feeling of how these things are going to interact with each other. And I'll be honest, I think the quilt gets uglier as you work through it. It just gets, I, you see all the frayed edges, you see all the frayed things going on in the background. 
Um, you may see some points that don't line up, but so much is forgiven once you get the binding on. And it's amazing how it just all comes together in the end to make something beautiful. So um, be patient with yourself. It's going to take a little bit of time, but check out prequilt.com. They may even still have their um, QuiltCon special on, so just take a check. Michelle Piper has asked, where can you get so tights here in Canada? Well, I'm pretty sure every quilt store can order them in for you. Um, and you can order them off the website as well. But I know I went next door to Sew Sisters and she ordered them in for me. Yeah. What is the best soap to use when washing old quilts? I am not the best person to be asking about this, but use cold water and gentle. It's almost even better just to soak them in a tub with Dawn um, because you're just wanting some gentle action on them. Again, I don't under, I don't know whether this is a very valuable quilt or this is just a scrappy quilt that has been in your family for a little bit of time. You whether it's all white or whether it's all dark fabrics, because of course you're going to treat an all white quilt or a very pale quilt quite differently than you'll treat all darks. Or if you've got high contrast like navy and white or red and white, you're going to treat those a little bit differently. But you can always soak a quilt in the tub with some Dawn to release a lot of that surface, um, surface dirt. Whew. Okay, so Don is telling me that Higlet in Un Southern Ontario also has the magnet set. Okay, so um, Teresa has asked, is there anything wrong with using the same fabric for the back and the binding? No, there's no problem. You can do that. Um, you just won't have any contrast between the binding and the back, but that may not even be an issue. So uh, that's totally okay if you've got extra fabric and it works with the rest of the quilt. D. Medhurst has asked, I need a clear plastic container, tote zipper bags to take into baseball packs. I like to, I like to sew it. Sorry, are you asking that you want to sew the plastic container? Are you wanting to take it with you so you can have some slow sewing inside it? Um, if you, I don't think I, oh. So for me, I take this with me when I go sewing. So I'm making hexes. This is my EPP case and this I take practically everywhere with me. It's, it's a pencil case. You know, I was touring, um, I was down to see my son. He was at, uh, school one day and I said, well, if you need to buy me a birthday present, this is what you buy me. And I could see immediately, I could keep my fabrics here. I could keep my inside pieces here, my threads, and this is where I keep my completed pieces. But if you're looking for something bigger, um, I interviewed Anne Cassan from Madame Sew so last week and they designed a beautiful clear bag with a couple of compartments and with a strap on it that you can keep projects in. Um, and I'm keeping a, I, I have one of those bags and I'm keeping a project and it's really good because it's a, with the extra pocket, you can keep all your papers and directions and some tools on that side. And you, then you can keep your, fa your fabric in the other. Donna from Handmade by Ying with Donna has asked, what is the pattern for the quilt behind me? This is just an HST quilt. It has feelings of a pattern called postcards from Sweden, but it's truly just HSTs. It was made for me um, and it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> Donna Wilson has asked, do I ever use two layers of batting? It's often called double batting. And yes, I have, I've, um, but they've been cotton for me. Um, I use two layers because I like the weight. My family likes heavy quilts and it gives a really nice good weight to the quilt. 
Um, now, people who have show quilts, uh, they often use a double batting of like wool and quilt and the wool will be on the side nearest the quilt top because wool doesn't have the memory that cotton does. So you don't get those terrible creases in it. So wool, silk, they all have this beautiful drape to them. Um, but I have never sewn with mixed ones. I know that Tula Pink double bats pretty well all her, all her quilts. Um, partly because she's got an amazing quilter that does the work for her and it just shows off both the fabric and the quilting really really nicely they have to do a lot of traveling uh, so the extra layer just gives a little bit more protection to the the top um, but I yeah I double bat not often but at least three or four times a year I'll do a double layer of batting but it does give a, a, a puffiness um, I did one for our charity quilt last year. Just It was just straight lines. And I don't think I'll do that again because it created a ridge uh, system to the quilt, which didn't quite work with what the quilt top looked like. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's still very warm. What long arm would I recommend for a newbie? A rented one, not a new one. A newbie should go out and go to some quilt shows, take some for a test drive. Um, just give it a whirl because different long arms work differently. And it's not necessarily um, this is a better feature than this feature. It's this feature works really well for me and that feature does not work very well for me in the way I like quilting. So you need to, to learn that before you, you get on... Um, before you start with your own. Um, you also get to, should try the rentals so that you get the understanding of whether you even like long arming. Just, uh, we get the, uh, the feeling that because now we're moving the head and not manhandling the quilt through, like all our quilting problems are gone. And there's just a whole different set that you need to worry about. Um, and it depends on what type of quilting you like to do. Like there's some patterns that you can't do on a long arm. Like in any long diagonal lines you can't do because your quilt head is only so big. So you're just working in a small area and moving the head along. And uh, yeah, you should be, you should rent one at a, a, a sewing center somewhere, take it for a test drive for a day, do it several times and you'll get a, an idea of what features you like. Um, what was it? There was a couple of long armors at uh quilt con who was there we had bernina we had inova and there was a couple of others but uh yeah definitely go to a quilt show and take some for a test drive but there are definitely inexpensive brands out there oh family devries has asked me what is the difference between eq8 and pre-quilt well um, I have not used EQ8, uh, personally, uh, but I use pre-quilt a lot. I, from my understanding and the results that come out of Q8, if you are going to be a pattern designer and you want to publish patterns, EQ8 might be the way you want to go, but... Pre-quilt is more for if you're just wanting to figure out what colors you want your quilt um, and doodling with colors and layouts and saying, well, what will this happen? And not even worrying about whether you're going to make the quilt. You're just having fun playing around with it. Um, and it's good for playing with ideas and just saying, well, what if, what if they've got a number of really good features, a magic quad, They've got randomizers for color and for um, block orientation. And it's really interesting to explore the what if. What if I did this? What if I did this? And seeing what comes out. So I would say I probably play around to make about 30 designs before I decide to quilt one. And it has been very freeing for me because before I used to think, well, I've made this design, I need to quilt it now and make a kit and everything. And then I realized I don't need to 
quilt everything I design. I can just play with ideas and see where they go. Um, a feature that I just found out about with pre-quilt is that if you know how to uh, make an SVG file in Illustrator, you can upload that block pattern into um, pre-quilt and you, uh, pre -quilt will just be able to read that so that you can colorize it the way that you want. So, um, yeah, I think there's a much less um, steep learning curve with pre-quilt. And, uh, but EQ8 is a very robust pattern as well. So it just depends where your endpoint is. What are you wanting to get from it? I uh, Victoria Stewart says, I have pre-quilt. Can you use different size blocks in the same quilt? Yes. Now, I actually have not used this feature, but it has to do with merging. Um, but give Gar or Laura a call, or they have a tutorial on it somewhere that shows you how to do that. So you can make narrow, um, you can make narrow columns, you can make wide columns, um, and the same with the rows too. So check that out. Ooh, somebody's asking me, I've done a little house, a little house quilt. I want to hand quilt it and don't know where to start. Stitching is not the problem. I just don't know what to do with the houses in space. Um, I'm afraid I am not a hand quilter, so I'm really not sure what the best way to do that. Um, so I'm not sure if there's any hand quilters in here that can give you some advice, but please lend your voice. <laughs> oh, I see John is here from Art East Quilting. He likes to play with pre-quilt too. Shannon Jackson has asked, have I ever been to the Paducah Quilt Show? That's in April. No, I have not. I'm going to put that on my list of things to do in 2025 because I'm just really busy from now until June, um, but I really like to go. Uh, Jessica Reinschmidt, have you ever had a YouTube idea jump the line? Yep, all the time. Um, and it's so funny because some, some videos take years to make, like my fabric storage one literally took me four years and I was showing Gina my notes. I had drawings and I have post-it notes and this huge big animal of it and trying to lasso it down. And there's been times when I've just sat down and went, oh, obviously I'm making this one today. And it just just comes out. It almost comes out perfectly that day and uh, <laughs> throws the system off a bit. Throws it off a bit. But uh, yeah, it happens. It happens. I wish it would happen more often because often it takes a long time to get a script together. Oh, I've got another person here. One quilting circle is going to be on the June cruise. Looking forward to seeing you too. It's um, it's funny how it seems so far off and then you realize, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's in a couple of months. So it's getting closer and closer. Exciting. I really cannot wait. Um, Donna Watson says she's used one of my videos today to address a hole in her seam. That was, there's a hole in my quilt video. Yeah. I think I had to do that a couple of weeks. I'm looking down at my quilt. My The quilt that's on my bed is that king size one from what's in the blue bag. And I just realized uh, I have a seam that's coming undone and it's about time I, I mended it. Okay, so um, just before we go, um, I cannot believe how fast time moves on. I just wanted to share a couple of photos that I had. Um, I'm just trying to find out wh where they went. I had them here, colored backgrounds, white. Are they in a different scene? I might have them somewhere else. Where did I put them? Here, I had organized them all earlier on you. Okay, give me a second here. Maybe they're here. In this one? No. Huh. In this one? Nope. Okay. 
So um, I was going to show you some pictures. So let me just see whether I can grab them some other way. Uh, some people were asking whether I had a quilt at QuiltCon. Now, I did not have my own quilt. I had a quilt that I participated in. And this is called Shape Salad. Um, this quilt um, was a quilt bee quilt. Uh, I think I talked about it before at one point, but these are all blocks that my buddies made and I quilted it and put it on the label. Uh, and I was also in part of this quilt. Um, this is the, one of the great things about QuiltCon is we have this charity tr challenge. So this is a quilt that um, my different people within the quilt made blocks to go on this quilt and mine are these purple and gold bars just at the the side above the flying geese the, if you've ever been to quilt con or one of the things that's exciting when you get there is one to see this quilt um that, that your group has worked on but to see all the other quilts that have had the very same prompt and the very same colors to see the incredibly different ways that these quilts, um, that you can quilt these things up. Uh, you know, some, the, the person next, uh, the, the guild next to us did all hexagons and sometimes it's very improv. Uh, sometimes it's custom quilted and sometimes it's, it's just with a, a pantograph, but there's just so much beauty in these charity quilts that it's one of my favorite parts of the show just to see how different brains work so, so differently. And they're all gorgeous. Uh, I, they're just all amazing. And you can see people that walk by them are proud that they're be, to be part of it. So um, that was one thing. Now, what's the other thing? Now, I wanted to introduce you to my quilt crew. Let me just see if I can find them. So we got together. Let's just see whether this comes out. There's my quilt crew. We met up. Um, we had this one little section off to the side. This was actually a really good place to, to gather. And all these people from all abroad. Now, you might recognize a couple of these people because some of them are makers as well. So we've got Donna, uh, uh, Ying with Donna. She's in the chat. She was there. So Becca, I'm not sure if So Becca's here. Um, we've got Ian. Uh, there's a, a crafter, a crafter named Ian. Um, and some of these people went to Alaska with me. Some people went to Panama with me. Panana, Panama. Yeah. Um, yeah, this, this <laughs> delightful young woman in the middle is uh, Goody Goods, I think is the name of her Instagram handle. And she was wonderful to have around in the room. Um, what else can I share with you from QuiltCon? Um, you, this is, this is, this is a picture from before QuiltCon even started. We just, a group of us met on the street and we, we knew instantly that each other were quilters. Some of them recognized me. And then you can see Ver, Verushka Zarty in this picture as well. There's Nepean quilter here, this redheaded lady. I met her at the QuiltCon in Nashville and I see her every year I go to QuiltCon and it's just so fun to meet these people that you've met before. Um, and I'm sure you might, uh, the woman in the colorful jacket was here all the way from the UK. So, um, if I've made, <laughs> This is all free advertising. It's not sponsored by the MQG, but uh, yeah, QuiltCon's a lot of fun. Uh, so anyways, um, we've got some, where's the travel events here? Not now. Um, so everybody knows about my cruises. I've told you where to go to get them. They're on the events page. Um, Facebook, as I said before, there's people that are looking for roommates uh, so that they, they can get the double, double occupancy rate. So check both the Holland page out for the Holland textile tour and the Iceland cruise. Uh, Holland is in September and the cruise is at the end of June. 
and leaves from Southampton, UK. And I think that's about it. Let me just check. Uh, Gina, is there anything I've forgotten? <laughs> Going to uh, last two videos. Um, if you haven't seen my last two videos, I counted all my fabric last week and uh, was shocked but with the amount of fabric that I have, but I truly now feel back in control of my over my fabric. I don't feel so lost at sea and I've got everything in places where I can use it. I've done a, a little shuffling of things in my space so um, they're not out of sight, out of mind. And the one before that was the fabric storage video that I was talking about. So um, I've read, um, had two really great Karen's Quilt Circle podcasts recently. I had Anne Cassan from Madame So last week and a couple of weeks before I had Valerie Prudeau. Um, and she is the author of Tumble Blocks, uh, tumble, Tumblr Quilts. And she sold out all her books at QuiltCon. So um, I'm not the only person that thinks she's got a really great uh, a really great book. So uh, just a reminder for everybody who's part of Karen's Quilt Crew, our next Stitch and Chat is this coming Saturday. Um, no, coming Sunday. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the Sunday. I've decided that all of them are on Sunday. And this time we're having the evening one. We're alter this year. We're um, having it fixed on a certain day every month and we're just alternating between in the morning and in the afternoon. So depending on the where you are in the world, you can catch it. So thank you all for showing up. It has been absolutely lovely um, sharing these questions with you and watching the community that happens in the um, happens in the chat, uh, seeing people that I met at QuiltCon, seeing people that I've known before and uh, looking forward to those that are coming on the cruise to coming on the cruise. So uh, I've got a new video coming out this week. So don't forget to um, tune in. <laughs> it's all about my quilt con haul and a life is good. So thank you very much, everyone. Take care.